Hey everyone, it's Chris Fifo, your Darwin Perennials product representative. And today I've got my box of cuttings from Darwin Columbia came in. I'm excited to open this up and see what we got. One thing I know for sure is in here is our Salvia Blue Bayou. And so as I open this up, I'm gonna remove my winter packaging. I'm gonna use my infrared thermometer to double check my temperature to make sure I'm within spec, 48 degrees. That looks good to me. As I unpackage this, I see I have my Salvia Blue Bayou here. I love it that we have the labels here facing right up. It's easy to find what I'm looking for in here. As I do unpackage these, I wanna be aware that Salvia are susceptible to spider mites. And occasionally there are outbreaks that we have to stay on top of. And so we want to make sure we inspect our cuttings very well with a hand lens for any spider mites or signs uh, that there have been spider mites on there, such as eggs. As I unpackage my cuttings here, nice and neatly organized within the bag. One thing that I don't like about salvia is when you see really big leaves on those cuttings. I see these have been trimmed off. They're sticking upright versus, you know, laying over flat where we can tend to have some issues with those leaves landing on the soil. So this spec here looks really good. The cutting color looks good, which sometimes an issue with salvia nemorosis. So I think these are gonna stick and propagate very well for us. I'm ready to stick my salvia blue bayous. My media is prepared. I like a slightly higher pH of 6.2 for salvias, pretty much across the board, salvia marbles, lyricals, blue bayous, all around 6.2. I've already inspected these for spider mites with my lens, they appear clean. Salvias, they're a little bit of an exception as far as rooting hormones go. I prefer slightly higher rates of rooting hormone. I prefer the powders, the Hortus, IBA salts, if I use these at too high of a rate, I can end up with some phytotoxicity. So 500 parts per million is the maximum that I would want to apply these overhead. And so that's why I prefer the powder at 1,000 parts per million for most salvias. We've already inspected our cuttings also for leaves. We want to remove any really large lower leaves. I don't see any of those on these. So these should stick very quick and easy. I'm not going to have any leaves. They're going to go over and fall down and cover up the crowns of the neighbors. And so that tends to be a problem with some salvias. I'm not seeing that I'm gonna have that issue with these. Here's our salvia blue bayou after two weeks in propagation. After sticking the cuttings, we brought them in the prop house with bottom heat natural photo period and we stuck them under a medium mist schedule initially they seemed a little bit dehydrated even though salvia doesn't really wilt like some other crops can but then we reduced it to a very low mist schedule just enough to keep these cuttings from wilting now a key point about these is they can tend to get hungry in propagation. They could take up to two weeks to root and during that time they use a lot of nitrogen. And so we need to replenish that with some fertilizer under mist. I prefer 20, 10, 20, 150 parts per million, like a heavy spray or we, I call it a sprench, not a full drench. But about day seven, this can really help this yellowing. I'm not really concerned about these now. These are rooting out nicely. If these weren't, didn't have these type of roots, I would want to pull this out and really look at how much callus I have. If a salvia is staying too wet in propagation, they can tend to build up just a lot of callus and not have any reason to shoot out roots to look for water. So I see we are finally rooting out here, but I'm not really concerned about the nitrogen deficiency here. That's going to help me maintain a nice toned growth. If I feed this tray too heavy and get too lush of growth, the leaves can get very big. They lay flat on the soil. That's a perfect hiding spot for spider mites. Also, they can tend to cover up the crowns of their neighbors in this type of a canopy. And so that can lead to losses as well. So these are gonna be very nice for a finished container.